It's the Sean Clifford episode. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Packers Rookie Preview. I am Tyler Brook. Today, yes, we did decide to talk about him. It is Penn State quarterback Sean Clifford, fifth-round pick. Uh, if you had listened to Draft Talk with myself and Justice, you had known that uh, he was the only prospect I think I was incredibly negative on. Uh, I tried to usually highlight some of the positives of guys, and I, I just didn't have it in me when talking about Clifford. That being said, I did take a time to go back, look at the film, and you know what? Still pretty bad, but not as bad as I originally thought. So why don't we go ahead and get into it, take a look at Clifford, why the Packers decided to draft him in the fifth round. So a lot of Packers fans were obviously pretty upset and felt like Clifford was a reach. Uh, on most consensus big boards, Clifford was in the 400s, and yet here he is at pick 149. Uh, that being said, there was a run of quarterbacks at the uh, time of the draft, so the Packers must have thought, hey, if there was any time we got to take a quarterback, now's the time. Uh, as far as Clifford goes, 6'2", almost 220 pounds, uh, pretty athletic quarterback, 9.04 relative athletic score. He enrolled at Penn State in 2017, uh, four-year starter starting back in 2019. That means he's going to be 25 years old as a rookie. So he has plenty of uh, experience is the nicest way to say it. Um, you know, he was, uh, you know, the leader for Penn State for multiple years, though. Uh, did help lead them to a Rose Bowl last season. His career numbers, 61.4% completion, over 10,000 passing yards, 86 touchdowns, 31 interceptions. Did rush for over 1,000 yards in his career. And if you, you know, you're you aware, obviously, sacks count against rushing yards in college. So he did have some production running the ball. Um, interesting, interesting potential backup quarterback for the Packers. Why don't we go ahead and dive into the film? Starting with some good because, you know, believe it or not, there is actually quite a bit of good on this guy. So we got two games of film for you today. We have Clifford against Ohio State and Michigan. So very good competition, which is going to help break this down, give us a much better, clearer picture of what Clifford can do. First thing I noticed, he has a lot of control of the offense pre-snap. And for a backup quarterback that's going to need to help Jordan Love get comfortable in the offense, I can see why the Packers might have done this. Here's one just first, one of the first plays against Michigan might have been the first. What he's doing here, you see him pointing. Hey, look at number six. What he's doing here, he's changing the protections pre-snap or basically telling the offensive line, where do you guys need to move to to make sure that all rushers are accounted for? So what he's pointing at here, we also have a teleprompter now. Big technical upgrade for these videos. Um, but you can see he's pointing at number six like, hey, this is a potential rusher. We need to make sure he's accounted for in the pass rush. So what he's asking the offensive line to do here, you can see they're also communicating He's asking for a slide protection. What that means is Fashanu, uh, next year, probably top 10 pick. He's going one-on-one -on -one with this guy. Everyone else is just sliding to their right to pick up everything. So you're seeing he's calling that out. He's getting the adjustments just in case six blitzes. And the reason he's sliding, sliding to the left I mean, look at the numbers. Usually when you're trying to do these slide protections, you're counting on what potential rushers are there to the left and right of the center. Here, we got one, we got two. We maybe have three, but he could be going either way, right? He could be going either of these ways. And then here we got one, two, three. So there's an imbalance on those rushers. That's why he wants to slide this to the left. Slide, sorry, slide to our left, to the right, have the left tackle one-on-one -on -one against this pass rusher. So you're going to see here. Notice how all the linemen slide that way. <clears throat> Even though six is not rushing, everyone's accounted for. The left tackle is one-on-one, -on -one, and he has a clean pocket. He gets to throw off. It's, it's not a big play or anything, but I think it's the best way I could have dissected this for you just to see. Again, let's see. You can see him call out the protection earlier on. Then he's getting it set, and you're just going to see the entire line besides the left tackle is going to move to our left or their right, and then the left tackle is on an island one-on-one. -on -one. 
it's these little things that are going to matter if he's ever in the game to make sure he's not getting clobbered. Uh, if you watch the Indianapolis Colts with Matt Ryan, they struggle with their protections even at the NFL level. It's a thing that happens with NFL teams. If rushers are not accounted for, they're going to get a free reign to the quarterback. It's going to be ugly. So the fact that Clifford at the college level is able to manage that's impressive. You'll see a lot of teams at the college level handle it. It's called a check with me where you'll see them like clap or fake the snap and then all the players will turn to the sideline to see what the coach is adjusting pre-snap. Uh, the fact that Clifford was given the autonomy to, you know, make adjustments at the line of scrimmage speaks a lot to, you know, how comfortable he felt within Penn State system. So that's really good to see. Next up, he does a great job of handling blitzes as far as picking them up, diagnosing them. Next thing you're going to notice about Clifford is he just does a great job of picking up blitzes, diagnosing them and throwing at them or behind them uh, or reading his hot routes. Basically, hey, that pressure's coming. I need to get the ball out right away. So you're going to see here 25 over here. It's as far as my teleprompter will go. Uh, he's going to be rushing. Clifford picks it up very quickly and just gets that throw out. If he gets that out a second later, that's a pass breakup and interception, something like that. So nice job picking that up here. We're going to have blitzes on both sides. You got these guys coming. You got guys coming here. It's just kind of an all-out blitz. So he needs to get that ball out right away, right? So he reads it, doesn't shy away from the throw, gets it off, and then this is just a great play by Parker Washington, his wide receiver, to get out of that, break it off for a touchdown. But again, just he reads the all that blitz, like, all right, I need to get that ball out quick, delivers a quick strike, touchdown. Excellent play, good composure, good way, the ability to diagnose it. Another one here. Blitz coming off the backside. 35 is rushing. He reads it, picks it up, just gets the hot red out, lets his wide receiver make a play. Almost a first down. So blitzes, his pre-snap processing, all of that's there. He also does a pretty nice job of climbing the pocket. Instead of trying to escape, make plays with his legs, he will, at times, do a good job of keeping his eyes up instead of just keeping them down and trying to run and finding that open guy downfield. So he feels the pressure coming around outside of him. He steps up, delivers a nice strike. It's a good throw. Another one here. I wouldn't say he's under pressure here, but I think he realizes his first read's not there. So he steps up a little bit, extends that play. Great throw, great catch. Another one here. He feels the pressure coming. He steps up. He doesn't fully escape. Keeps his eyes upfield. Finds his tight end deep downfield. So he can extend plays. He can climb the pocket. It allows him to make more throws, make more explosive plays. He doesn't give up on the pass just because he feels pressure, which is nice to see. But sometimes, you know, he is a he is an athlete. We talked about his athletic score. Um, look here, climbs the pocket. Nice little subtle move, and then he escapes, takes off downfield. He does get popped at the end of that, but, you know, we'll take it. Um, speaking of that athleticism, he, if he's asked to, he can run the zone read. He can run some QB draws. Uh, Penn State drew up some designed runs for him. So he has the ability and the athletic, or he has the athletic ability to, to make some plays. So zone read here, you can see the defender crashes down. He sees, oh, I kept it. This guy's here. I'm going to make one subtle move, foot in the dirt, and then he's gone. He's taken off. Heck of a play. He does get tripped up by uh, one of the Michigan players. I uh, can't remember his name. I know he just got drafted crazy fast. Um, but, hey, there's there's some movement skills there. We'll take it. Again here, foot in the dirt, plant it, turn up field. If he's not going up against a guy with like a 4-3-40 time, he's, he's gone there. That's a touchdown. But heck of a play. They do score a few plays later. So we'll take it. And then last, he does have a deep ball. It doesn't show up a lot. But when he takes those chances, I mean, 
This is a heck of a throw. Wide receiver's not super open, but he's able to hit him in stride. Exactly where it needs to be. That's a big time throw. Big time throw. So we'll take it. So I highlighted quite a bit of good. You know, it there is a lot to like as far as pre-snap, post-snap, keeping his eyes upfield, but as far as the ability to play quarterback and make throws, I think that's where we're gonna see it's a little lacking. So here we go. This is a third down and ten. He watch he's just making all these adjustments, right? He's like, hey, check protections, bring the wide or running back in, bring this wide receiver across the formation. He's making some check at the line again. And then he's telling the wide receivers to widen out, widen out. So all of this, he's doing all of this on third and nine. So he's doing something. He's got something cooked up. What's he gonna cook up? A little whip route for two yards. That's the most Kirk Cousins thing I've ever seen. And that's not what Packers fans want to hear. Um, all Again, it's impressive that he can manage all of that before the snap. You would just hope that he, they would be drawing up something besides throwing it at the, at the line of scrimmage and not getting a gain for a first down. They ended up having to punt. That's uh, unfortunate. Not great. Here, just... You can't be staring down, guys. I know it's your check down. But, I mean, he's looking at him before he's even out of his break. Tui Moloau, uh, the redshirt freshman out of Iowa State, is just baiting him the whole time. Throws a pick. I mean, that's a preventable one. I know it's your check down. No one else may be open, but what you have to do there is at least look off until you're ready to make that throw. And, he, I mean, he's staring here. He's staring. He's staring. You can't be staring down that guy at the NFL level especially. You're going to get picked off a lot. That's a big no-no. Big no-no-no as a quarterback. Here. They're just running a mesh. Number five is coming from the right side of the screen. You can see him right here. I mean, that should be the primary read here. It looks like It looks like the two tight ends are trying to seal this off to open up number five. And you're going to see it. I mean, that throw needs to be there now. He's wide open. He's wide open. Instead, he keeps hesitating. He pump fakes. I don't know where he's trying to throw there. You know, it's almost a touchdown. They, they get a forced fumble. I can't. I believe it ends up being a touchdown, but you, just, you don't want to take those chances. Throw that on time, throw in stride, it's probably a much easier score for them. They don't have to recover a fumble in the end zone to get a touchdown, uh, especially on a simple mesh like that. Like That's a very basic concept. You'll run even at the high school level that you just need to get that ball out quickly as soon as he crosses the defenders uh, and hit him in stride. But Clifford just hesitates there. It's a much uglier play. Here we go. This is just escaping a clean pocket. I know he's athletic. I know he does a good job of climbing the pocket at times. I'm not sure what his plan is here. I think he sees the twist that gets picked up and accounted for. It's only a three-man rush. We only have three rushers. And he's panicking. And he's just bailing. He's bailing from the pocket. Didn't need to do that. I mean, he almost steps out of bounds and takes a completely unnecessary sack. If he just steps in this pocket, he's fine. All three rushers are accounted for. But he starts rolling out, 32 is allowed to attack him. And it's just a wasted play. Not what you want to see. Here, just he gets a little pressure in his face rolling out, and it's just a sailed throw. Not sure this shows up a ton on tape, but, you know, that's, that's a gimme throw. Hope that your running back can make a guy miss and take, up, take off upfield, but at least set him up for success. Here, Simple. If you're making that throw, you're committing to that throw, get that out now. Don't hesitate. You're going to lose your accuracy. You're going to lose all your mechanics. Just deliver it. If you're confident in it, don't hesitate. You can't really... You're going to lose some accuracy trying to reset yourself and get that throw off quickly. And then lastly, just too hoppy trying to go through his reads. He's bouncing around. He's moving off platform. You can see he's moving to his left and right. He's getting off where he's used to. And then he's delivering that without even seeing where the wide receiver is. So it's just going to be an ugly play. 
So, you know, a lot of that shows up in a lot of games. You know, if you are a Big Ten fan, I'm sure you've seen Clifford over the years and found yourself wondering how he was still a starter. Again, watch the film, though, going back. Not as bad as we thought he was going to be. I can see why the Packers want him as a QB2 behind Jordan Love. He's going to be a great guy that's going to help understand the offense and help work with Love to get a better understanding of everything. So that's all we have for you guys today. Thank you for watching. Next week we'll be taking a look at Carl Brooks, at Dontavian Wicks. Really excited about both of those guys. Very interesting players for the Packers. If you've enjoyed the channel, be sure to subscribe. As always, I'm Tyler Brook. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.